Hello. So uh, this is James with Love My Pups and uh, MyBreederSupply.com, and uh, I've just got this. I've got this little girl here with me, not because we're showing her off, but that way you don't have to just look at my face and get completely bored. You can look at a cute puppy as I'm talking. So this is a whole thing about what is the right time to decide to have a C-section. So I, I literally have conversations every week, maybe every few days, on people who have used one of my dogs for, uh, for an AI, and now they're trying to decide when's the right time to uh, uh, have the C-section. And I run into situations you know, very frequently where people are gonna make some bad mistakes. And, and unfortunately, occasionally people do make these mistakes, maybe one in 30 or 40 litters, where people take puppies too early. And that can be a disastrous situation. Why? Well, the problem is, is that when a puppy, uh, when puppies are born, um, their lungs have need to be ready to be able to accept breathing air versus being in the placental sac. And that happens, that process happens at the very end of the maturation process before they whelp. And if you take them two days early, you're very likely to be in a situation where they cannot breathe properly and puppies then die over the next 24 to 48 hours. It's a really horrible situation, it's heartbreaking, and it's completely unnecessary. And I, but I still have people who make these mistakes even when they're in the care of a vet. Uh, very typically the situation can be that maybe a vet's not gonna be available the weekend. And guess what, folks? Just because the vet's not gonna be available the weekend, these dogs are still gonna, you know, they're gonna whelp where they're gonna whelp. And, uh, and if you decide to take them early because the, 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 the vet won't be there, you could be running into a really potentially serious situation. So the question is, how do you time an AI? An art excuse me, how do you time a um, cesarean C-section? Um, so the first thing is Frenchies, almost all of them are born by C-section. You're, you're really flirting with danger if you do natural whelps. I know, I know some of you out there are doing that, and, and, I, and this is not what this is about. This is about people who are going, oh, that cute little dog, isn't it? About people who are going to go through the normal process for birthing the Frenchies, which is going to be through C-section. So the normal situ normally the way that people do this is they, they take the day they did the, the AI, the first one, and they then count 63 days and they say, that's the day that we're gonna have whelp. And the answer to that is, it's quite possibly gonna be correct. But if you're wrong, that's where the problem lies. So the question is, what are the signs that let you know that whelp is imminent so that you can, number one, not run it too late where you get up in the morning and find out that you've got puppies stuck in, uh, coming out the back end of your Frenchie, uh, or uh, do it too early where you run into the situation where lungs haven't developed properly. So here, in the, here is a list of things that you should be doing to be safe. The first one is, is you take a good old regular Walmart thermometer that costs a couple of bucks, and you stick it, stick it in your dog's butt, and you stick it in that far. You stick it in so it goes up to the part where the, you know, the, the, it's it starting to curve. You get it in there properly inside the dog's anus. And you take its temperature every day in the morning, starting about a week, five days to seven days prior to when you think whelp should be. And what you should see is a temperature that is a normal dog, something around 101, it'll start dropping. And it'll start dropping over many days, and finally it'll drop down to a temperature that is below 99. So that's, when I say below 99, I mean a temperature that's 98.9 counts. And you wanna, if you have a temperature that's below, it, it is that low number, 98.9 or lower, Take it again in 10 minutes. Make sure you've really done it properly. If you get two consecutive temperatures 10 minutes apart that's below 99, you can bet your bottom dollar that that dog is gonna have puppies within 24 hours and you're probably pretty safe to go ahead and have a C-section. So that's the simple way. Unfortunately, it doesn't always show up. Sometimes you can have a dog that never, it bounces around 99.7, 99.3. It never goes below 99. And I'd say that happens to me probably about one fourth of the time. So although you'd like to use that technique, it's not always there. So I don't use that as a single thing that lets me know that whelps there. So here's the next things that you will see. Um, Likely, you're, you may see some mucus, some jelly-like substance hanging off the back end of your dog. That's called the mucus plug. That happens anywhere from five days to a day before C-section. You may miss it completely. There's not much value to time a C-section on because it's so unreliable. It's when it happens. So ignore that. Milk production. You know, we like to see our dogs develop boobs 
and um, you know, milk, milk is obviously there. Again, you might see that five days before whelp. You might not see it till two days after whelp. Again, no good to, to, to time the, to time the C-section. A dog that's not eating any food, almost always dogs will nibble on food. They may nibble on it less as they get closer to whelp, but typically that 24 hour period prior to whelp, they'll stop eating food. That's a, I like that indicator, not all by itself, but is there kind of a cohort to these other indicators to let me know that probably we are coming up at the right time. So a dog that's refusing food completely, Probably a good indication, probably. If you think you're close to AI and it's not eating food, that's one more thing that convinces you that uh, you're probably right. Um, a dog that is panting. That's panting, shivering, those, um, those kind of behaviors that, are, that would not normally see in your dog and you start to see them, it normally means you've got labor that's imminent, probably 12 hours away. Um, a dog that is nesting like crazy. So what I like to do is I'll put my girls into a crate with newspaper on the bottom and I will see this behavior where they are digging frantically away, not just making a little nest, but frantically tearing up that newspaper. That is normally a pretty good indication that you are again a few hours, half a day away from having puppies. So if I see a number of those things together, then that gives me great confidence that I'm probably on the right track, especially if that all coincides with something that's close to the 63-day mark. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the 63-day mark. So, so here's, here's the problem. The day that you AI does not directly affect the day that the dog will whelp. Whelp is based on 65 days from ovulation, plus or minus one day. So the problem here is, and so normally you AI two days after ovulation, which makes it 63 days. Uh, the problem is, is that if you AI'd early, then you will have a whelp that will show up late. If you AI late, you'll have a whelp that will show up, um, if, if you AI late, a whelp will show up early. So, so these things can affect you know, get you wrong on when you are going to take puppies. So if you go strictly off the AI date, if you got the AI right, you're okay. But if you got it wrong, if you AI'd early or late, you're going to correspondingly get the wrong whelp date. So that gets to be the problem. And this thing is measured in two days. If you are off two days, if you take puppies two days early, their lungs have not developed properly, and you very likely lose some or all of the litter. So um, just simply going off the AI date and doing nothing else is, is, is okay most of the time, but some of the times it's really going to get you caught with the pants down. So be very careful about just accepting this date from the, from the vet where the vet says, oh yeah, we AI'd on this date, so this is the due date, we'll schedule it right now. And they schedule this thing, you know, literally, you know, two months before you have the C-section. Um, so here is the one thing that is really reliable, and it's taking some blood doing a progesterone test. So if you look at the progesterone levels of a dog, what happens is the normal dog that is not, hasn't gone through heat, is not pregnant, has a progesterone level that's you know something less than a half. We're talking about a, a nanograms per liter, I believe, is the, I may have got my scale wrong. But anyway, we all talk about progesterone levels of somewhere between one and 30. So if you've got a level that's less than one, that dog, um, that is a dog that has probably uh, not gone to heat yet. That, so then what happens is the progesterone levels start to rise. We look for a level of five. That's the time that we say the dog is ovulated. We then AI two days later, its progesterone level will be about 15. And then after that, progesterone levels will continue to rise and stay high in the numbers of 30, 40, 50, 60. For a normal gestation, if you don't get high progesterone levels, the dog probably won't sustain the pregnancy. And then what happens is those levels stay high and they remain high for the next two months and they start to drop very rapidly about three days prior to whelp. If you take the progesterone level of a dog that is two days from whelp, its progesterone level will be around two. If you look at a dog's progesterone level when it's one day from whelp, it'll be about one. So if you take a progesterone test and you find that your numbers is two or less, you're safe to take puppies. If it's less than that, or one or a half, you're absolutely safe to take puppies. So that is if you're in doubt as to what the heck's going on, 
then that is the reliable thing to do, is to do a progesterone test. Now, the problem is, is lots of places can't get the progesterone results until the following day, so this kind of messes you up. What I do is I use the uh, Target ovulation test kit that I get from, uh, get that glare out of the out of the screen there. I use the target ovulation test kit that I get from Hamilton Research. I can do the test myself and I'll get the results within about 10 minutes. And on that test, it's white when the progesterone level is above 8 and it's a fairly, uh, fairly dark blue with the progesterone levels something less than 1. So you can tell from that by the shade of the color where you are in the progesterone level and from that you can then save tables. So what I look for is I look for a dog that's you know, he's doing all the right things, his temperature has dropped, and if I see all of those things, I don't bother with a progesterone test, I can just schedule my C-section. But if I'm not sure, then the, the best thing to do is to do a progesterone test, and that way you can avoid this mistake of taking puppies early. And there's one other thing that you can do too, the vet can do a digital exam where they take a couple of fingers and put a finger, finger up inside the dog and they can see whether the cervix is dilated or maybe even feel a puppy there. And if you see any of those things again, that's a simple quick test to do. You're already going to pay for a, an examination, have a C-section, so they're not going to charge you any extra for that. And that's one thing that I like to do, I'll say, hey doc, can you just do a digital exam? And, and he'll do a digital exam and he'll say, oh yeah, yeah, she's opened up. And that makes me feel confident again that uh, nature's, you know, is taking its course, the cervix is dilating, and uh, she's going to have puppies anyway. So please don't just accept this number that a vet gives you based on when you did the AI because you honestly can make some serious mistakes. And uh, if you do it right, then you're going to have puppies like this little girl here. She is a a lilac and tan, Frenchie. She's gorgeous, we love her. Um, and you will be successful. Get it wrong, and uh, you may not be getting kisses like this. So, I've got all this written written format on my web website, www.lovemypups.com, L-O-V-E-M-Y-P-U-P-S.com. And also, go look at My Breeder Supply, Dot com. There's lots of products there that will help you during this process. There's things that you should have when you've got your puppies so that you can be safe, especially for the first seven to ten days of their life to be successful. It's all about raising healthy little Frenchies. And if you do it all right, you'll be successful. If you don't follow this, the, the, you know, the, 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 the guidelines that we should all know about, then you can have problems, and uh, that's just no fun at all for anybody. So anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. You want to say bye-bye too? Mm -hmm. Or just give me a kiss? There you go. Thank you. Bye.